Hi, I'm Steve Sandler, the founder of AEI Systems, a company that specializes in modeling, analysis, and simulation. A large part of our focus is on analog and power electronics, though we support RF and instrumentation as well, primarily for the high reliability arena. In our business, we are frequently called on to assess and troubleshoot system level issues, many of which are related to the power distribution network. The causes of the customer issues are generally covered in this very short list. In two previous videos, we discussed the use of vector network analyzers, or VNAs, in making impedance measurements using either one port or two port test configurations. We have one more method of measuring impedance available to us, another form of VNA measurement, and that is the current injector measurement. The current injector is a voltage controlled current source which is modulated by the VNA. The resulting voltage of the device under test, or DUT, and the modulated current are both measured by the analyzer, which then calculates voltage divided by current to obtain impedance. The current injector method is not quite as accurate as the two-port measurement, but it can come close. This technique can provide measurements from approximately 1 milliohm to thousands of ohms or more, and can be used for in-system measurements. The injector impedance measurement works very well with low power devices such as op amps, voltage references, and low power regulators. We have even used it with Class D audio amplifiers. A major benefit of this measurement is that it can also be used to determine power integrity and signal integrity sensitivity, as well as to perform time domain measurements such as high speed load steps and also to non-invasively measure PSRR. The drawbacks of using a current injector are that it cannot measure very low voltages. It requires the device to be powered, and it requires very low impedance connections to the device under test, or DUT. With all of those pros and cons in mind, let's return to the issue of impedance measurement. While the current injector is not considered to be as accurate as the two-port measurement, the results are still quite good, and the device offers other benefits. Agilent independently evaluated the PicoTest current injector, comparing it with their own two-port VNA impedance measurement, which is considered the gold standard of impedance measurement in terms of accuracy. Agilent used the test setup shown here, which includes PicoTest's J2111A current injector, to measure the output impedance of a DC-to-DC -DC converter evaluation module. Hatchland also measured the output impedance of the same DC to DC converter EVM using the two ports shown through configuration shown here. In both cases, the VNA being used was the Agilent E5061B. These are the results they obtained when measuring the magnitude of the impedance. And here the results are expanded to show the phase of the impedance measurements. As you can see, the current injector and two-port shunt-through measurements are in close agreement, and the results for magnitude and phase are quite good, even at values as low as 2 milliohms. As useful as they are in measuring impedance, current injectors can also help with other types of measurement. Some engineers use current injectors to create a line disturbance, either for non-invasively measuring PSOR, or to create a disturbance to measure sensitivity of power integrity and signal integrity to such test signals. There are several benefits to using current injectors in non-impedance measurements. Current injectors can assess stability, don't require an injection resistor, can be used in confined spaces, and can generate time domain current steps or profile. Now let's look at some examples of how current injectors may be applied in non-impedance measurements. Current injector is capable of generating a very high speed step load using a function generator or arbitrary waveform generator for modulation and then using an oscilloscope to record the measurement. The speed of the current injector is an order of magnitude or more faster than a typical electronic load though operating at much smaller current levels. Here you see a 500 microamp current step applied to an LM4040 voltage reference. The frequency shift of the two operating currents is evident. While the load pulse is high, the reference bias current is reduced. This results in increased effective inductance and therefore lower crossover frequency and higher Q. The current injector is almost perfectly non-intrusive, 
while allowing very high speed edges. PicoTest offers different models of current injectors to satisfy different test requirements for spitching speed and pulse amplitude. For example, the J2111A can provide low current pulses at slew rates as fast as 20 nanoseconds, while the high current J2112A can produce up to a 1 amp peak pulse at rates as fast as 10 nanoseconds. We frequently make measurements such as the one shown here in system. This is a very good example of a high speed load step applied to a point of load or POL converter. Note that the edge speed is below 10 nanoseconds for a 400 milliamp step. While this is a very impressive speed, actual loads such as FPGAs, DSPs, and LNAs can be much faster still. The interconnecting inductance between the current injector and the dot must be very carefully managed at these speeds. We tend to use short coaxial connectors, not cables, wherever possible. We use a Temflex cable from Molex where we need to use an actual cable. Temflex is a very low inductance coaxial cable that presents approximately 1 nanohenry per inch with a characteristic impedance of 10 ohms. It is not a good match to 50 ohms and so still needs to be kept relatively short, especially at higher frequencies, but it works quite well for us. This slide shows a common method for non-invasively measuring PSOR. In this case, using an op amp as the DUT. In some cases, there is an isolation resistor, such as the 100 ohm device shown here, which allows a signal to be generated. However, we have also been able to perform this measurement without isolation resistors, using the non-zero impedance present in the circuit to generate measurable signals. The very high sensitivity and seal activity of a VNA allows very small signals to be measured, even in cases where there's a good deal of system noise. These measurements show little difference between the traditional PSOR measurement, which is the faint line, and the non-invasive measurement, which is the darker line. Note that the use of a common mode transformer, such as the J2102A on channel 1 or 2 of the VNA, or the use of differential probes, can be used to improve the fidelity of the PSOR measurement further. Alternatively, you could omit these devices if you're using Agilent's E5061B since this VNA has a floating front end. There are several companies that use this measurement technique regularly for both PSOR and for testing signal integrity, power integrity sensitivity in system. One method of testing a system's power integrity sensitivity is to apply a perturbation to a power bus and then measuring the resulting phase noise on the system clock using a spectrum analyzer or signal source analyzer. In other words, a noise signal is injected onto the clock's power supply, and then we measure the clock jitter. If the jitter is severe enough, we may even be able to observe it on the oscilloscope. The current injector provides a convenient way of injecting a noise signal onto the power bus. By doing this test, we can uncover problems such as poor power supply stability, a subject we have discussed in previous videos. Here's an example where we measured the phase noise or clock jitter on the output of a 125 MHz clock powered by an LM317 linear regulator. In this test, we used a current injector to inject a noise signal onto the output of the regulator. For the noise signal, we selected a sine wave at the frequency of the regulator's bandwidth. The regulator bandwidth is actually a function of the capacitor installed on the output of the regulator. In this case, the use of a 0.47 microfarad ceramic capacitor results in a bandwidth of 130.8 kHz. So that is the frequency of the noise signal we injected into the circuit. Now if we take a closer look at the phase noise measurement, we'll see there is a resonance at 130.8 kHz. However, the spectrum that we're seeing on screen is actually centered around 125 MHz, which is the clock frequency. So this resonance is actually occurring at 125 MHz plus 130.8 kHz. So why are we seeing this resonance? It is a function of the poor stability of the voltage regulator, since poor stability leads to the regulator having an output impedance curve that is not so flat. And ultimately, this results in the oscillator being very sensitive to noise at a frequency that's near the bandwidth of the regulator. In other words, the spike in the phase noise can be attributed to the high Q in the regulator's output impedance. 
And if we would repeat this measurement with other capacitor values and using other dielectrics like tantalum, we would find that the bandwidth and output impedance curve of the regulator would change and there would be corresponding changes in the resonances observed in the phase noise measurement. We can also repeat these measurements with different types of injected noise signals. We can change the frequency of the injected signal, add modulation to it, or instead of injecting a sine wave, we can inject a square wave. All of these variations will produce different phase noise results, helping us to understand the sensitivity of the clock jitter at different frequencies, and the sensitivity of the clock jitter to power supply stability, noise, and output impedance. Ideally, we would like the power supply output impedance to be flat, because any peaking in that impedance curve leads to sensitivity in the clock jitter at a frequency related to the bandwidth of the regulator. For those interested in learning more about how to use current injectors to measure impedance and other parameters, see the references listed here. And if you have any questions about the information presented here, please email me at steve at picotest.com. Thank you.